It looked like an ordinary dinosaur fossil on a museum table until a hospital grade CT scanner revealed something hiding in its chest, a dense iron rich lump shaped eerily like a four chambered heart. If this structure once beat, it could rewrite what we know about dinosaur biology, potentially proving they were warm-blooded athletes and not sluggish giants. But almost no museum dares to display its full story. Why would the only possible dinosaur heart in existence be left in scientific limbo? The answer starts in the badlands of South Dakota, with a fossil no one expected to matter. The Hell Creek Formation stretches across the windswept corners of South Dakota, a place where ranch fences cut through ancient riverbeds and the bones of vanished worlds surface after heavy rains. In the early 1990s, this was the backdrop for a quiet hunt. No film crews, no crowds, just fossil preparator Michael Hammer and his son Jeff, walking the scrub with their eyes on the ground. Among scattered fragments and weathered bone, they found a skeleton, unlike the showstoppers that fill museum halls. It was pony-sized, maybe three meters from nose to tail. A plant eater called the Cellosaurus neglectus. Not a celebrity like T-Rex, but a survivor from the very end of the age of dinosaurs. Hammer knew the Hell Creek beds could be generous, but this dinosaur looked ordinary at first glance. The bones were mostly in place. The skull was complete a rare stroke of luck for a genus often known from scraps. The skeleton's ribs curled around a block of stone, but in a landscape where every fossil is wrapped in layers of rock and sand, that did not seem unusual. Field notes did not dwell on the chest. There was no sign that this would be anything more than a well-preserved herbivore. One more data point for the Cretaceous checklist. The fossil was jacketed in plaster and shipped out of the Badlands. Later, it would travel east, passing from private hands to the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, a transaction worth $300,000 once preparation and transport were tallied. In the museum lab, technicians began the slow work of cleaning and stabilizing the bones. For months, Willow, the nickname given in honor of the ranch owner's wife, waited quietly among the shelves. No one suspected that inside its chest, beneath layers of ancient sediment. The story was about to take a turn that would echo far beyond South Dakota's empty fields. Inside the museum lab, Willow's skeleton rested on a padded table, its ribs arching protectively around a stubborn, dark mass. The technicians expected the usual work, brushing away grit, stabilizing bone, cataloging each piece. But this lump was not like the rest of the matrix. It sat deep in the chest, right where a heart would have pulsed in life. Every attempt to chip or coax it loose met with resistance. The tools scraped, but the mass barely budged. It was not ordinary sandstone or clay. Instead, it rang under the pick, dense and metallic, with a weight that felt wrong for fossil bone. The team ran a magnet over the surface. The response was faint, but unmistakable. Analysis soon revealed the presence of goethite, an iron oxide mineral that forms in waterlogged conditions, sometimes replacing organic material grain by grain. The color was a deep, rusty brown, almost blood-like. Under the work lights, it looked more like a chunk of iron ore than anything that belonged inside a dinosaur. Yet the position was too precise to ignore. The lump nestled between the ribs, tucked beneath the vertebrae, exactly where the heart would have rested. No other part of the skeleton showed such a feature. The rest of the body cavity was empty, the bones clean. The technicians exchanged glances. Was this just a mineral nodule, or could it be something more? Removing it by force risked destroying any structure inside. The decision came quietly leave the mass intact, and bring in technology that could see through stone. Willow's chest would go under a hospital-grade CT scanner, the same kind used to look for tumors and blood clots in living patients. Whatever was hidden inside 
The answer would have to come from within. Technicians wheeled Willow's torso into the radiology suite. The fossil's chest still locked around that dense, iron-rich lump. Hospital staff had seen everything from broken bones to tumors, but never a dinosaur. As the stone torso slid into the computed tomography scanner, the whir of the machine replaced the quiet of the lab. On the monitor, the first images looked like any cross-section of rock, gray, grainy, nondescript. But as the radiologist, Dr. Thomas Kuzmitz, advanced through the slices, something unexpected began to appear. Layer by layer, the mass inside Willow's rib cage resolved into a rounded structure, almost symmetrical, with four distinct chambers. Each chamber was separated by thin partitions of denser mineral, echoing the basic layout of a modern heart. To anyone who knew cardiac anatomy, the resemblance was uncanny. Two upper chambers, two lower chambers, and a single arched tube emerging from the center matched the layout of a four-chambered heart with a main outflow vessel. In living animals, reptiles such as lizards and crocodiles have three chambered hearts, while birds and mammals have four. The difference is not just trivia. It is the difference between slow, cold-blooded metabolism and the high-energy, warm-blooded life that powers birds and humans. Kuzmitz later described one image as looking like a carcass hanging in a butcher's shop. Dale Russell, the museum's senior curator, called it a major wake-up call. The world had never seen anything like this before. A dinosaur fossil with a structure so heart-like, so anatomically precise, that it seemed to rewrite the rules of what could survive the passage of deep time. If this is a heart, everything changes. The scan did not just reveal a lump of ironstone. It opened the door to a new way of thinking about dinosaur biology, and it set off a wave of excitement that reached far beyond the lab. The audience clicks on titles like The Dinosaur Mummy with Skin and Organs, Museums Won't Show You, The T-Rex Tumor Museums Don't Want You to See, and The Feathered T-Rex Fossil China Won't Let Scientists Study. The news broke in April 2000, and for a moment the world of paleontology felt electric. Headlines shouted that a dinosaur heart, real, four-chambered, bird-like, had been found inside a fossil from the end of the Cretaceous. In labs and offices, scientists argued over what this could mean. For decades, textbooks had painted dinosaurs as slow, lumbering, lumbering, cold-blooded creatures, more like giant reptiles than anything alive today. But here was a structure that, if truly a heart, looked nothing like a lizard's. It had four distinct chambers, separated by mineral-thin walls, and a single arching vessel exactly where you would expect an aorta to branch off toward the body. This was a finding that demanded attention. It suggested a very different organization inside some dinosaurs. The original research team, Paul Fisher, Dale Russell, and their colleagues did not hold back. They described the CT scans in detail. Two upper spaces, two lower, with clear boundaries between them. The mass sat perfectly in the chest, cradled by the ribs, right where a heart would have worked to pump blood. The scans were precise, and the images were convincing to many. Russell called it a major wake-up call. To him, the implications were clear. In mammals and birds, a four-chambered heart separates oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood, fueling high-energy lives. Reptiles, with their three-chambered hearts, cannot match that metabolic pace. If Willow really had a four-chambered heart, then at least some dinosaurs were not cold-blooded at all. They were built for speed, endurance, and activity. The idea carried a simple, powerful promise. The media surge was instant and overwhelming. Dinosaur, with a heart of stone, ran on television and in newspapers. The North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, which had paid over $300,000 to acquire and prepare Willow, put the fossil on display and leaned into the story. Visitors lined up to see the skeleton 
that might change everything they knew about dinosaurs. For a generation raised on images of slow, swamp-bound giants, Willow's chest promised something different. Proof that dinosaurs could be as dynamic and warm-blooded as the birds in their backyard. For the original authors, the stakes could not have been higher. If they were right, this was more than a curiosity. It was the missing anatomical link between cold-blooded reptiles and the hot-blooded world of birds and mammals. It would mean that, buried in the heart of a, of a small, unassuming dinosaur, was the answer to one of paleontology's oldest questions. If this is a heart, everything changes. But not everyone was convinced. The louder the excitement grew, the more closely critics began to look at the evidence. That scrutiny would open a very different line of questions, and the debate was only beginning. Doubt had arrived. Timothy Rowe, a paleontologist known for forensic detail, stepped into the debate with a different set of tools. He and his team at the University of Texas High Resolution X-Ray CT facility examined the scans and the fossil itself, looking not for evidence of life, but for the unmistakable fingerprints of geology. Their first observation was a simple, damning one. A rib was partially engulfed by the mass. In living animals, no heart ever swallows bone. In the language of sediment, this was classic concretion behavior, a mineral mass growing slowly, mineral by mineral, wrapping around whatever lay in its path. Inside the mass, Rose team found patterns that did not fit the script of biology. The chambers that looked so convincing on a radiologist's monitor read to them like irregular voids and bands of cement. It was a patchwork of mineral growth, not the careful symmetry of heart tissue. The boundaries between these spaces were jagged, not smooth. They followed no anatomical logic, only the chaotic flow of groundwater and iron through decaying flesh and sand. Chemical analysis added weight to their argument. The mass was dominated by goethite, a common iron oxide. The internal structure showed no trace of preserved cardiac muscle, valves, or vessel walls. Instead, the layers matched the concentric patterns seen in thousands of concretions from the Hell Creek Formation and similar sites worldwide. Even the supposed aorta, the arch tube that had excited the original team failed to match the orientation and branching seen in any real dinosaur or bird heart. Under close inspection, it looked like a mineral-filled crack, not a blood vessel. Rose Group pointed out another detail. Willow's body held a second, smaller concretion near the leg. If the chest mass was a heart, what was this one? The simplest answer, they argued, was also the most mundane. Both were products of the same chemical process, not anatomical miracles. In science, they wrote that the object is not a fossilized heart, but an ironstone concretion. The controversy now had a new center of gravity, and the burden of proof shifted back to those who still believed in the possibility of a 66 million year old heart. But the scans alone could not settle it. A final answer would require higher resolution testing and a willingness to risk the fossil itself. In 2011, a new team of scientists took another look at Willow's chest with sharper tools and a more skeptical eye. Instead of relying on the original medical CT scans, they used high-resolution micro-CT imaging and X-rays, pushing the limits of what could be seen without damaging the fossil. The hope was simple. If any trace of real heart tissue had survived, these scans would reveal it, right down to the microscopic structure of muscle fibers and blood vessels. Timothy Cleland, Michael Stoskoff, and Mary Schweitzer led the re-examination. Their approach was methodical, combining advanced imaging with thin section histology, slicing tiny samples from the mass to look for the telltale patterns of living tissue under a microscope. The micro-CT data map the inside of the concretion in slices a fraction of a millimeter thick, capturing every change in density and texture. 
What they found was stark. The chest mass was dense, layered, and iron rich, just as before. But the internal spaces, the so-called chambers, showed no sign of organized tissue, no muscle fibers, no valves, no wall separating left from right or top from bottom. Instead, the boundaries were jagged and irregular, matching the chaotic patterns of minerals crystallizing in a decaying cavity. Histology confirmed it. The mass was made up of gothite and sand, with only a few scattered scraps of cell-like material, possibly plant debris or degraded animal tissue, but nothing that could be called a preserved heart. The team published their results in the journal Naturwissenschaften, laying out a clear case for the concretion hypothesis. The evidence for a fossilized heart, they said, just was not there. But even with the most advanced technology available, a small thread of uncertainty remained. The cell-like particles hinted at something organic, but not enough to tip the scales. For now, the science had narrowed the question but it had not closed the case. Willow's chest still held its secret, and the fossil world would have to decide what to do with an answer that was not quite yes or no. On the museum floor in Raleigh, Willow stands quietly among larger, flashier dinosaurs. Its ribs still arch around that iron-rich mass in the chest, but the labels nearby are careful measured words that hint at controversy without inviting it in. Where once the mass was called a fossilized heart, the signage now refers to a possible heart or simply a chest mass. There is no bold claim, no dramatic headline, just a nod to the debate that once made Willow famous. Behind the scenes, curators and collections managers face a dilemma that rarely makes headlines. Changing a single label can cost thousands. Redesigning a gallery, rewriting educational materials, retraining tour guides, each step adds up not just in money, but in time and credibility. For an institution built on trust, admitting uncertainty feels risky. The museum invested over $300,000 to acquire and prepare Willow, and for years, it was a showpiece, a dinosaur with a heart, proof of a new way to see the ancient past. When the scientific tide turned, the story did not vanish overnight. It faded quietly into a kind of institutional limbo. Some curators see value in caution. A collections manager might argue that science is always moving forward and exhibits cannot chase every new paper. Others worry about confusing the public. If a label says possible heart today and mineral concretion tomorrow, what does that say about the authority of the museum? The result is a compromise. Willow is displayed, but not celebrated. The story is told, but only in the margins. The fossil that once promised to change everything now sits in a gray zone, too important to hide, too unsettled to headline. For visitors, the question lingers. If this is a heart, everything changes. If it is not, why is the answer so hard to find on the wall? The silence is as much a message as any exhibit. In the end, the real cost is not just financial. It is the quiet gap between what science debates and what the public ever gets to see. Right now, thousands of fossils gather dust in museum collections their secrets locked inside stone. As new imaging reveals details once thought impossible, every drawer becomes a potential case file waiting to be reopened. The debate over Willow is not just about one heart, it is about how much we are still missing. In paleontology, the evidence we ignore might be as important as the evidence we find. What else is hiding in plain sight? <laughs>